Hello, my name is Victor Grauserat and I'm one of the developers at Enigma working on the Enigma data marketplace. In this second video about the marketplace, I will focus on the buyer side, those we call data subscribers. What I'm going to go over today is documented on our documentation side at this address. And so I'll start by subscribing to a new dataset. Here I have my Catalyst environment uh, where I'm running the latest version of Catalyst. And the first thing that I want to do is see what, da what data sets are available on the marketplace right now. And for that, I'll issue this comment, Catalyst Marketplace LS, which will list the data sets currently available or registered on the smart contract. And I see that there is one, the one that we registered on the first part of this video tutorial. And that is a data set that holds GitHub uh, statistics on the top 100 crypto assets by market cap. Um, so this looks very interesting to me and I do want to subscribe to this data set. So the next thing I do is type Catalyst marketplace subscribe dataset github so then i have i have here configured two different addresses that i can choose to use either one on whenever i'm transacting on the marketplace here i will use the second one my second hardware wallet you might recall that I used the first one for the first part of the tutorial. So here I, I set a, a different one for, for subscribing to data sets. And so I'll go with one. Now it tells me, Catalyst tells me that the price for a monthly subscription to this data set is T10 ENG. You might recall that we set that up when we registered this data set on the first part of this video series. Then Catalyst checks that I have enough balance to cover this transaction on this address that I just specified and yes I have more than 10 ENG tokens so then please confirm that you agree to pay 10 ENG for a monthly subscription to the dataset GitHub starting today yes I want to do that so now the interesting part comes and it catalyst informs me that to execute the subscription I will need to process two different transactions I will not be sending ENGs directly myself, but the first transaction will authorize the marketplace contract to spend 10 ENG on my behalf. So the first transaction goes to the Enigma token contract, and the second transaction is the actual subscription to the, to the desired dataset. So because Catalyst doesn't handle the pri your private keys for you, rather it relies to, on third-party software, uh, here are the instructions on how to process these transactions. We are currently working on an integration on the browser with, with MetaMask to improve this process, but for this uh, early preview, this is how it works. So I type this address here. I'm using my Ether wallet and I'll use a hardware wallet um, to actually sign the transaction. And so I follow the instructions here where I copy the from address. Again, this is the address of my wallet. I click generate information button, which sets the, the gas price and the nonce. Again, the nonce is um, a value that keeps incrementing and sort of keeps track of the number of transactions that have been generated from this address. Um, so then I go I, to the address. This would be the first transaction goes to the Enigma contract. This is the contract that's deployed right now on the Robston testnet. So this, this will change when we deploy this the marketplace on, on mainnet. The value that I want to send is zero. I'm just going for an authorization here. The gas limit, I override the default because this is a smart contract and there's some code to execute. Gas price, I accept the default. The nonce matches, that's a good sign. And then I copy the data. And then I say I, 
How would you like to access your wallet? I have a ledger wallet. Uh, it's right now unlocked. I connect to the, to the wallet and I'm gonna use now this address that matches the one that I have configured here. So go ahead and unlock my wallet and go to generate the transaction. Here I have my hardware wallet uh, that is prompting me to accept this transaction and I confirm transaction yes. And here I have the signed transaction which I copy paste back into Catalyst and send the transaction to the network. The transaction has been posted on the network and we are waiting for it to, to complete to proceed to the next step. So first transaction has succeeded and then I need to, to, to post the second transaction which is the actual subscription. So again I have the instructions and I copy paste into a new tab to start from scratch and make sure I don't get confused. Now from address, this is again my wallet address, generate transaction, the nonce has increased and I want to send it, in this case this goes to the marketplace contract which is different from the one that we sent before to the Enigma token contract. The value is zero. The gas limit, I override with this value. I accept the default value for the gas price, non G7. And here is the data that I want to put in the field. So again, this is going to be ledger wallet that I connect uh, using my second address. I unlock it and I generate the transaction. Here I have my wallet um, it's asking me to send to confirm that to validate this transaction informs me of the different fields and I say yes and I have the signed transaction here which again I copy paste back into Catalyst. Again, it's waiting for the network to process this transaction and again it can take from a few seconds to, uh, to some minutes. So I'll wait here until the transaction completes. The transaction has succeeded. It didn't take too much. I think that was about 30 seconds was successful. And so I have successfully subscribed to dataset with this address and now I can ingest this dataset anytime during the next month by running the following command. So let's do it. I want to ingest this data. Well, I have to choose which address I want to use for this uh, transaction. I want to choose the second address, which is the one that I just subscribed to. So the data has been ingested successfully and now I have it available on my environment, and my Catalyst environment, to, to use it in some, in some algorithm. Here I have one such sample algorithm which I call GitHub Research. Now I'm gonna go quick, very quickly over to tell you what it does. So first I start, I import some external libraries that I need. I import some functions, some methods from Catalyst that I need. And what I will, I wanna look the number of GitHub commits evolve as price evolves over time and I'm gonna look over the entire 2017 year. So I set two variables here for the first day and last day of the year. This is a very special algorithm where I'm not gonna do any trades. So the, here are the three main methods that Catalyst uses, initialize, handle data, and analyze. So I'll do nothing on analyze. On handle data, I'll just pull all the data from the dataset GitHub and then I'll pull the price on a daily basis for the last uh, 365 days of the year. And I'll do that for two different coins, Zcash and Monero, which I have randomly chosen. And then in the analyze function, I will format some plots so that they look pretty. And I will run this algorithm against Exchange Poloniex, which is the one that provides me the historical pricing data in this case for for these two coins, Zcash and Monero. And here's the trick. 
This algorithm will only run for one day on the 31st of December uh, so that the look back period is 365 days cover the entire year. So it will collect this data, do the plots and exit. Let's see, let's see what happens. I type Python GitHub research. So that starts to run Catalyst, it initializes Catalyst. It's telling me that it's running this algorithm in backtest mode. As I said, it only generated, it, it simulated one day uh, on the 31st of December and here's the resulting plot where I'm plotting for these two coins the evolution of price, the green line and the number of commits, blue line of the main repository for this crypto asset there are two different y-axis on the left I have the number of commits and on the right I have the price and here I have two different plots, one for Zcash one for Monero. From this first plot uh, one would say that there's not an apparent direct correlation between the number of commits and the price in US dollars for each of these crypto assets, but I'll leave it up to you to uncover some relationships between these or other coins or these or other GitHub data or other premium data sets that will start be being offered on the marketplace. Thank you for watching and happy algo trading.